I've been thinking about hard games lately. Why are games hard? Well, that's too vague a question, isn't it? There are so many wide-ranging genres of games that identifying a universal factor in all of them is impossible. Not all games use lives or checkpoints. Some games are based around timers, while others are based around health bars. What about unresponsive controls or chance-based level design? Clearly, there's a lot to categorize and link together. Or, or is there? Maybe asking why games are hard is actually too specific a question. Why is anything hard? If you take an average game and double the number of enemies in a given fight, it will logically increase in difficulty. Depending on how the game is designed, the difficulty may double or maybe go up by half, or maybe it will be barely noticeable. That's called intensity. By increasing the size of a pit in a platformer, you're increasing the intensity of that game's difficulty. With a smaller pit, you might not need to jump right at the edge, or you might not need to hold the run button. But with a larger pit, you will have to perform more complicated and demanding maneuvers to succeed, making the game more difficult. Now let's introduce a second variable. Take that pit and make three more like it. Now you may have successfully jumped that first pit, but what about that second one or the third one? Why would you only be able to succeed at a fraction of your attempts? They're the exact same pit. That's what I'm calling consistency. Regardless of skill level, every player is bound to make a mistake sooner or later, and that one slip-up will be what sends them to their doom. Now, can you think of a real-life situation where you would apply those two factors? What about weightlifting? That's just an intensity difference. And how about trying to hit five home runs in a row? That's just a high consistency demand. When you think about it, real life is a lot less complex than you think. As you can see, the two factors manifest in a lot of different ways, and every conceivable situation in any game can be traced back to those two factors. The simplest way to think of consistency is as a success rate. Per a predetermined number of maximum failures, you must complete this many of a task. When I say task, you could mean anything from killing to collecting to dodging. A game communicates how high this rate must be through elements such as lives, continues, health bars, or time limits, among many others. If a game gives you, say, three lives per level, you therefore must have a success rate of 33% or higher to progress. If two levels both offer the player one attempt, the longer level is the one that demands more consistency. Just like with any real-world challenge, repetition and practice will lead to a higher success rate as you become more familiar with the controls and level design of a game. The ability to replay levels is the most powerful tool for players who want to master a game. It's through time trials and challenging their own high scores that players become less likely to mess up and more likely to impress their friends when they want to show off. Now, whereas consistency can be described as the challenge of stringing together many different maneuvers, intensity can be described as the challenge to perform a single complex maneuver. If you think about it that way, consistency is about how often you are allowed to fail over a period of time and intensity is about how many different ways there are for you to fail in any given point in time. Dance Dance Revolution is a fairly straightforward example of this. The more arrows you have on screen at one time, the more arrows you have the potential to miss. One element that lends itself towards a game with high levels of intensity is checkpoints and save states. By continually advancing your respawn point, the game allows players more chances to tackle an element they might otherwise see as impossible. There's nothing more frustrating than having to play through 5 minutes of relatively simple gameplay only to continually fail immediately on a highly intense section. Now as different as consistency and intensity are, they are also very interrelated. To be considered a fair difficulty, an ideal game will feature a proper balance between the two. As one factor increases, the other must decrease to account for the other. However, even if a game has a properly balanced amount of the two factors, making the factors too low or too high will still make the game much too easy or difficult respectively. The arcade version of Gunsmoke is a good example of this done wrong. I can't even get halfway through the first level for four different reasons. A. One bullet will kill you. B. There are bullets everywhere. C. The level is extremely long and you are very slow. And D. After each failure, you're always sent right back to the beginning. Basically, points A and B translate into a high intensity, while points C and D translate into a high consistency. Any one of these points could be altered, and would make the game much more reasonable. Think of how unforgiving the original Castlevania is. Now imagine it without the checkpoints in each stage. By adding checkpoints, you lower the consistency in a game, allowing for more intense level design. The reverse is clearly just as valid. Have you ever heard of Battle Kid Fortress of Peril? 
Each individual screen in that game isn't extremely challenging, but if you've seen the game in action, you'd know that the game demands an insane level of consistency, respawning you from the beginning of some very, very lengthy stages each time you die. Talk about brutal. One type of situation that can be just as brutal is when a game is based around odds or random events. It's not fair to expect a player to maintain any consistency when their fate is determined more so by luck than skill. So, in order to balance for this phenomenon, all the game's difficulty is now in intensity. In a game with randomly generated hazards or a game where a player's available options depend on chance, no one strategy will always be effective, and the solutions to certain problems may become much more complex. But what about the opposite situation? What if the intensity is so low that there's almost no way you could mess up? Like a kid's game where you have to answer simple questions involving shapes or colors. Because of how simple the challenge is, the only way the game can be considered difficult is to demand an extreme level of perfection. So, as you can see, when a game lacks even the smallest amount of one of the factors, the other skyrockets to near infinity, making the game damn near impossible. And finally, using what I've talked about today, let's see if we can explain why many people often state that older games are generally more challenging than newer games. First of all, I don't think this is completely true. I think that older games are often perceived as more difficult because of their heavy reliance on consistency. Because many game companies got their start developing arcade machines, a game's profit came from how many times the game was played, as opposed to paying full price up front for it. So games needed to be made more difficult to ensure that they couldn't be beaten in one sitting. It's much easier to alter the consistency of a game compared to its intensity, because without lots of testing, you could potentially make a situation that's so intense, the game becomes literally impossible. But then things started to change. After the slow transition from arcades to consoles, games started to become longer and they started featuring save files. It was no longer unreasonable to make incredibly intense sections since players could now replay those specific sections instantly. And although the occasional arcade game would give you the option, different difficulty levels really made the most financial sense on a home console format. And with that said, I've said pretty much all I wanted to about game difficulty. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have different opinions on it, so please leave those in the comments. Also, please leave some feedback on anything in my video, I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching my video, taking the time to do that, and have a nice day.